What is the primary goal of the measurements and errors experiment? A. Learning to use various measuring tools and understanding their limitations. Which of the following is not a required section of the lab report as per the provided text? C. Discussion. For measuring the dimensions of a wooden stick, which instrument is recommended? B. Vernier caliper. What formula is used to calculate the volume of a rectangular object like a wooden stick? B. La Douai. When calculating density, what units are typically used in this experiment? B. Jam 3. How is the relative error represented? B. As a percentage. What instrument is used to measure the dimensions of cylindrical objects in this experiment? C. Micrometer. What does the slope of the mass versus volume graph represent for objects made of the same material? D. Density. Which value is needed to calculate the relative error? C. Both experimental and actual values. What is the main purpose of identifying and estimating errors in measurements? C. To understand the limitations of the experiment and the reliability of the result. 1. What is the primary purpose of this experiment? B. To study the motion of an object with constant acceleration. 2. What is the assumed direction of the acceleration due to gravity in this experiment? B. Downward. 3. Which equation describes the displacement of an object in free fall starting from rest BD equals 1 half at carry 2? 4. What is the role of the folk gates in this experiment? C. To measure the time it takes for the object to fall between them. 5. How is the distance between the folk gates adjusted in this experiment? B. By moving the upper folk gate. 6. What is plotted on the graph in this experiment? B. Time versus displacement. 7. What is the expected shape of the graph obtained in this experiment? B. Quadratic. 8. What value is extracted from the slope of the graph? E. Acceleration due to gravity. 9. Which of the following is not a possible source of error? In this experiment. D. The object's mass. 10. How many significant figures should the calculated value of G contain? A. The same number as the least precise measurement. 11. What is the relationship between D and T in free fall? C. Quadratic. 12. What is the relationship between V and T in free fall? E. Directly proportional. 13. What is the dimension of G using dimensional analysis? A. M. S. Carry 2. 14. What is the main source of error in the smart timer? B. Its resolution. 15. What is not a possible cause of error in the experiment? Answer. D. The mass of the ball being too large. 1. What is the primary objective of this experiment? Answer. D. All of the above. 2. What does the text recommend to use when drawing vectors on a coordinate system? Answer. A. Ruler and protractor. 3. Why is it important to choose a scale for the vector plot? Answer. D. Both A and B. 4. What is the significance of the positive x-axis in this experiment? Answer. A. It is used as a reference point for measuring angles. 5. What does the text suggest for checking the accuracy of the calculated components? Answer. D. Both A and B. 6. What is the significance of the sum of vectors in this experiment? Answer. D. All of the above. 7. What is the purpose of drawing the vectors graphically? Answer. D. All of the above. 8. What should be discussed in the results and discussion section of the lab report? Answer. D. All of the above. 9. What is the key takeaway of this experiment? Answer. D. All of the above. 10. Which of the following could be considered a source of error in this experiment? Answer. D. All of the above. 11. What is the purpose of attaching the graphing sheets to the lab report? Answer. D. Both A and B. 12. Which of the following is not mentioned as a method for improving the accuracy of the experiment? Answer. C. Using a more complex coordinate system. 13. Why is it important to discuss the limitations of the experiment in the conclusions? Answer. D. Both A and B. 14. What is the key difference between the graphical and mathematical methods of finding the sum of vectors? Answer. D. All of the above. 15. What is the expected relationship between the graphical and mathematical sums of vectors in this experiment? Answer. B. They should be similar, but with some discrepancy. What is the primary purpose of this experiment? Answer. B. 
to study the motion of objects moving in two dimensions with constant acceleration toe which of the following is not a piece of equipment used in this experiment answer c spring scale three what is the primary factor affecting the acceleration of projectiles neglecting air resistance answer c gravity four what is true about the horizontal component of a projectile's velocity answer a uh, it is constant. 5. Which equation correctly describes the horizontal displacement of a projectile at time t? Answer. B. X equals vt. 6. How does the time of flight for a projectile fired horizontally from a height h depend on the initial velocity? Answer. C. It is independent of the initial velocity. 7. Which equation correctly describes the time of flight for a projectile fired horizontally from a height h? Answer. A. Uh, t equals 2 h g 8. What is the relationship between the launch angle and the time of flight for a projectile when the initial and final elevations are the same? Answer. A. Uh, time of flight increases as the launch angle increases. 9. Which equation correctly describes the horizontal range of a projectile when the initial and final elevations are the same? Answer. A. Uh, R equals V sin 2 theta G 10. In part 1 of the experiment, what is the purpose of using the foot gates? Answer. C. To measure the initial velocity of the projectile. 11. In part 2 of the experiment, what is the purpose of adjusting the launch angle? Answer. B. To investigate the effect of launch angle on the horizontal range. 12. Why is it important to ensure the projectile lands at the same elevation as it was launched in part 2? Answer. B. To simplify the calculation of the horizontal range. 13. In the data analysis section of part 1, what is the purpose of comparing the theoretical range with the measured range? Answer. A. Uh, to validate the theoretical equations used. 14. How would you expect the measured horizontal range to change if you increase the initial velocity of the projectile in part 1? Answer. C. The measured horizontal range would increase. 15. In part 2, what is the expected relationship between the calculated horizontal range and the launch angle? Answer. A. Uh, the calculated horizontal range increases with increasing launch angle up to a maximum value, then decreases. 1. What is the main purpose of procedure to a correct answer? A. To illustrate Newton's third law through a tug-of-war scenario. 2. What is the purpose of zero or terry buttons on the force sensors? Correct answer. B. To zero out any initial force readings before the experiment. 3. What is the expected relationship between the forces FAB and FB at in data analysis to a correct answer? B. FAB and FB of will always be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. 4. What is the purpose of procedure to be? Correct answer. A. To measure the force of a collision between two carts. 5. Why is it important to have one cart with a mass at least double that of the other in procedure to be? Correct answer. D. To create a clear difference in the forces exerted during the collision. 6. What is the expected relationship between the forces FAB and FB at in data analysis to be? Correct answer. B. Fab and FB of will be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. 7. What is Newton's third law? Correct answer. A. Uh, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. 8. Which of the following is an example of Newton's third law in action? Correct answer. D. All of the above. A ball rolling down a hill. A person pushing a cart. A rocket launching into space. 9. What is the significance of the force time graphs in data analysis to it and to be? Correct answer. D. All of the above. They show the duration of the force applied. They provide a visual representation of the forces acting during the experiment. They can be used to calculate the work done by the force. 10. What is the main conclusion that can be drawn from both procedures to it and to be? Correct answer. B. The forces between two interacting objects are always equal and opposite. One, what is the main purpose of this experiment? Answer, B, to study the relationship between force, acceleration, and mass. Two, according to Newton's second law, what happens to the acceleration of an object if the net force acting on it increases? Answer, C, acceleration increases. Three, how is acceleration measured in this experiment? Answer, B, by analyzing the slope of the velocity time graph. Four, what is the purpose of zeroing the force sensor before starting the experiment? Answer. B. To ensure the sensor only measures the force applied by the hanging mass. 5. How is the mass of the cart determined in this experiment? Answer. B. By calculating the slope of the force versus acceleration graph. 6. What is the significance of the vertical intercept 
on the force versus acceleration graph? Answer. C. It represents any frictional forces acting on the cart. 7. What would happen to the slope of the force versus acceleration graph if the experiment was conducted on a different planet with a different gravitational acceleration? Answer. A. Uh, the slope would remain the same. 8. Which of the following is not a factor that affects the acceleration of an object? Answer. C. The initial velocity of the object. 9. What is the purpose of the pulley in this experiment? Answer. A. Uh, to change the direction of the force acting on the cart. 10. Why is it important to ensure that the string is level before starting the experiment? Answer. B. To ensure the force acting on the cart is purely horizontal. 11. What is the expected relationship between force and acceleration according to Newton's second law? Answer. B. Directly proportional. 12. If the cart is moving at a constant velocity, what can be said about the net force acting on it? Answer. A. Uh, the net force is zero. 13. What is the significance of the relative error in the determined mass? Answer. D. All of the above. 14. What is the difference between mass and weight? Answer. A. Uh, mass is a measure of the amount of matter in an object, while weight is a measure of the force of gravity acting on the object. 15. Why is it important to use a linear fit to analyze the data in this experiment? Answer. A. Uh, to determine the slope of the graph. Question. What is the purpose of the experiment on friction? Answer. C. To find the coefficient of static and kinetic friction for different surfaces. Question. What is the formula for calculating the coefficient of static friction, mu s? Answer. D. Mu s equals f's. N. Question. How is the static frictional force measured in this experiment? Answer. D. By observing the maximum force required to start the friction tray moving. Question. C. What is the role of the force sensor in the experiment on friction? Answer. To measure the applied force on the friction tray. Question. D. Why is it important to pull the friction tray at a constant velocity during the experiment? Answer. 6. To minimize the influence of acceleration on the measurements. Question. 7. What is the relationship between the force applied to a spring and its extension or compression? Answer. Linear. Question. What is the formula for Hooke's law? Answer. D. F equals kx. Question. How is the spring constant, k, determined in this experiment? Answer. D. All of the above. Question. What is the difference between the shiny and dull springs used in the experiment? Answer. D. The shiny spring has a larger spring constant than the dull spring. Question. What is the purpose of using the light and heavy spring bumpers in part to be of the experiment? Answer. D. To create different levels of compression for the springs. Question. What is the difference between static friction and kinetic friction? Answer. D. Static friction is the force that opposes the start of motion while kinetic friction opposes motion that is already occurring. Question. What factors can affect the coefficient of friction between two surfaces? Answer. All of the above. Question. What is the significance of the vertical intercept on the graph of frictional force versus normal force? Answer. C. It is the value of the friction force when the normal force is zero. Question. What is the role of the spring constant in Hooke's law? Answer. D. All of the above. Question. How can the spring constant of a spring be used to calculate the potential energy stored in the spring? Answer. D. By using the formula PE equals 1 to Kx. Question. What is the relationship between the work done on a spring and the potential energy stored in the spring? Answer. D. They are equal. Question. Give an example of a situation where friction is desirable. Answer. D. A bicycle tire gripping the road. Question. Give an example of a situation where friction is undesirable. Answer. C. A door hinge becoming stiff due to friction. Question. Describe how springs are used in everyday objects. Answer. D. All of the above. Question. Explain how the concept of friction is related to the concept of a spring constant. Answer. D. Both friction and spring constant are measures of resistance to motion. One, which of the following factors influences the kinetic energy of an object? Answer. C. Velocity. Two. At which point on a roller coaster does the cart have the greatest potential energy? Answer. B. Top of the hill. Three. What happens to the potential energy of a roller coaster cart as it descends a hill? Answer. B. It decreases. Four. 
The principle of conservation of energy states that. Answer. D. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transformed. 5. A roller coaster cart has a velocity of 10 m. S. If its mass is doubled, what happens to its kinetic energy? Answer. B. It quadruples. 6. What is the minimum height a roller coaster cart needs to start from to successfully complete a loop? Answer. B. Greater than the radius of the loop. 7. If the potential energy of a roller coaster cart at the top of a hill is 100 J, what is its kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill, ignoring friction? Answer. C. 100 J. 8. What is the relationship between potential energy and height? Answer. B. They are directly proportional. 9. What is the relationship between kinetic energy and velocity? Answer. B. They are directly proportional. 10. If a roller coaster cart has a constant velocity, what is true about its energy? One, which of the following factors influences the kinetic energy of an object? Answer. C. Velocity. Two. At which point on a roller coaster does the cart have the greatest potential energy? Answer. B. Top of the hill. Three. What happens to the potential energy of a roller coaster cart as it descends a hill? Answer. B. It decreases. Four. The principle of conservation of energy states that. Answer. D. Energy cannot be created or destroyed but it can be transformed. 5. A roller coaster cart has a velocity of 10 m. s. If its mass is doubled, what happens to its kinetic? 1. What is the main purpose of the experiment described in the document? c. To study the conservation of momentum and kinetic energy in collisions and explosions. 2. What are the key pieces of equipment used in this experiment? b. A dynamic system, a science workshop interface, and rotary motion sensors. 3. What does the term kinetic energy, refer to, b, the energy of an object due to its motion, 4, in the context of the experiment, what is meant by, total kinetic energy before, and, total kinetic energy after, b, the total energy of the system before and after the collision, considering only kinetic energy, 5, based on the data provided in the document, what can be concluded about the conservation of momentum in the experiment, uh, momentum is always conserved in all collisions, regardless of the masses involved. 6. What is the difference between initial and after initial measurements in the data tables? Ah. Initial measurements are taken before any collisions occur, while after initial measurements are taken immediately after the first collision. 7. What can be inferred from the data regarding the conservation of kinetic energy in collisions? C. Kinetic energy is not always conserved in collisions. 8. What is the relationship between momentum and mass? Momentum is directly proportional to mass. 9. What is the difference between an elastic collision and an inelastic collision? Uh, an elastic collision is one where kinetic energy is conserved, while an inelastic collision is one where kinetic energy is lost. 10. In the context of the experiment, what is the significance of the total column in the data tables? Uh, the total column represents the sum of the momentum of all objects in the system. Thank you. Please write a comment if you found this content helpful. If you have any difficulties with the subject, just mention its name, and I'll simplify and explain it. You can simply comment and send the digital content via email, and I'll tailor it to be easy to understand and access.